Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks to all the witnesses for being here. Uh, Mr. Dugan, I just want to start with you, if I could. I noticed something in your testimony that I thought was interesting. You said that much of the problem with counterfeit goods online is due to organized crime in brick stores and brick and mortar stores, and uh, that organized criminals shoplift from those stores, and then they turn around and they sell the goods online. Have I got that right? Uh, no, Senator, I don't think I commented on counterfeit goods. Um, well, probably stolen goods. Yeah, ex I'm sorry. Okay. Stol yeah, That's stolen goods. Stolen. I'm sorry. I introduced the word counterfeit. Okay. I mean, they are goods online that are stolen, and then they, they steal them from brick and mortar stores and turn around and sell them online. Have I got that? Yes, sir. Is that right. Okay. So the New York Times earlier this year uh, had a story in which you were quoted, I think, as saying our security officers are assaulted on a pretty regular basis in San Francisco, and that San Francisco is one of the epicenters of organized retail crime. Have I have I got that right? Yes, sir. You okay. do. Can you just say more about that because I, I I think it's I think this is something that is has not been widely reported. It's not widely understood that part of the problem that we're seeing and and counterfeit or in this case stolen goods online i mean we've got a deluge of these goods and it's linked also it now turns out to this the crime wave that we're also seeing across the country so maybe say something more about that yeah yes thank you for that that question senator i will start by saying that this is not a big city crime um that this occurs in all 50 states thefts of organized retail crime occur just as much in low crime suburban neighborhoods as they do in, in america's largest cities i know that's probably news to a, to a lot of folks because it's not covered on the media as it is in, in some of our major cities. So uh, what I meant to say is we were talking about San Francisco specifically. There's a lot of stolen product there that gets filtered to other states, uh, specifically like Texas, North Carolina, and New Jersey. They get a lot of that stolen product from San Francisco. Um, so my, 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 what I was trying to make a point was even though the product is stolen in one area, the problem is, is statewide. That's why we need federal legislation. Right. So in other words, it can be stolen from one place, San Francisco, New York, St. Louis, whatever, wherever. And it, it, but then it, it finds its way online. I mean, so you, 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 it shows up in, in online marketplaces in some, in some contexts, and it's competing with legitimate goods, with, with, with goods that are entirely legal online. And you've got, you've got competition that's making its way into these online marketplaces that's due to organized crime at the brick and mortar level. Is that fair to say? Have I got that right? That is fair to say, except I would add it's unfair competition. Right. Yeah, exactly. They're getting, they're getting the products for much, much cheaper. Um, but that's what our team does. We, we track these investigations state to state. Uh, all across the country, and then ultimately it leads us to the same place, which is an online marketplace, which is why we're looking for your help today. And, and how do you, what do you think is the best way for this body to address that phenomenon? I think the swift passage of the Inform Act is a vital first step. Very good. Um, thank you for that. I want to, I want to turn uh, to the Amazon uh, self-preferencing question here for a moment. Uh, Mr. Muterich, I, I think that you testified to Senator Klobuchar earlier that your product in particular, that Amazon for a while had an Amazon Basics knockoff of your product. Have I got that right? That's correct. It, it's now been taken down. Is that? It was that taken right? down only because it, I'll say, accidentally infringed on some of our registered trademarks. I see. So I, I just want to highlight this problem because I think it's so central. You know, last year, the Wall Street Journal reported that Amazon collects detailed data about merchandise. So Amazon can create co uh, copycat products. They did that with your products, it sounds like. The report, the Wall Street Journal report said this was standard operating procedure. Amazon denied that. They said they had procedures in place banning the practice. Now, has that been your experience, Mr. Muterich? I do not have any insight into how Amazon makes their decisions, but I was aware that the four-pack that they created or six-pack that they created um, bore a striking resemblance to another unique item that we had on Amazon. Well, it doesn't seem that you're the only one. Employees in the same report said that the procedures that Amazon referenced weren't enforced. And in fact, Amazon encouraged employees to break those procedures. And then last month, Reuters reported that Amazon's own internal documents reveal it's still doing the same thing. The markup has reported evidence that Amazon is systematically rigging its search engine to return results for its copycat products over producers like you, Mr. Muterich. And I just want to drive home the point that we can talk all day about the problems of counterfeit goods, and those are significant, but that's not going to make a huge dent, I don't think, unless we do something about the self-preferencing on these platforms. I've introduced legislation that would prohibit this self-preferencing. I've joined legislation by Senator Klobuchar and Senator Grassley that heads in the same direction, and I just want to underline that I think that is absolutely vital that we tackle this issue. 
last thing, Mr. Munich, in my few remaining seconds here, uh, Senator Blackburn was, was asking about uh, some of the country of origin issues, and I, I want to just uh, highlight this. Um, your product, tell us about the problem of counterfeiters using high-strength magnets in some of the knockoffs of, of your product. And I think that these were not goods that were not made in the United States of America. Is that right? That's right. These, are, these samples I have here, which I ordered last week, were not made in the United States. Some of them do have producer markings. This one says made in China. This one says nothing at all. Um, and they do contain these high-strength magnets, which cause significant hazard to children when they're playing with this product. Absolutely. And I just want to underline that we're talking a lot right now about supply chain and manufacturing issues, which is absolutely important given our supply chain crisis. But I think what we're also seeing in this context is that when giant companies like Amazon help hawk foreign counterfeits, these are counterfeits, they're made abroad, parents don't usually have any way of knowing this, it's very difficult to find out. Uh, they're not only endangering children, they're also taking jobs away from people like you and your company that are made here in this country and uh, putting American kids uh, at risk as well as, as our own uh, economy. So we need, to, um, we need to find ways to push back against this simultaneous problem of counterfeiting, of misrepresentation,